place on the grid. Green flag is waved at the back. Wait for the red lights to come in the top left of your picture. When the red lights go on, they'll go out. Race two of the RNG British Tank Cup is underway. Great start from Sullivan Mountie. Not so good for Ollie Walker from pole position. Look at Johnny Garnett away like a stabbed rat down in towards the first corner too. He goes into second place, but it's Mountie who gets the whole shot then, followed by Garnett as Garnett then manages to make his way back through at the end of Cops Corner. So it's now Garnett in front as they head in towards Maggots and then into Aintree Corner for the first time. Garnett gets the Data Tank Fast Start Award after managing to lead across that first sector time. They all managed to make their way very cleanly through the first couple of corners, but a great start from Garnes, followed by Evan Belford. <laughs> what an incentive to be first past the first sector, and Mounsey looked like he was on for that perfect launch, perfect reaction, just ran a little bit wide into Cops, and if a little bit wide, you don't get the drive out. Johnny Garnes, a little bit more patient, turned it tight, and got through that first sector first. Well, you can see a variety of different lines. These smaller bikes do lend themselves to being able to run sort of different lines, especially at this very wide Silverstone circuit. Yeah, different lines, there can be three abreast mid corner and because they're light they can change direction quite quickly they, they can react and uh, yeah perfect perfect racetrack for 1.6 miles short lap as well so uh, great racetrack but Johnny Garner certainly means business today but Mouncey thinks he wants to do something about that. Garnes, of course, the reigning champion and 42 young to actually make his next step of his career forwards in the uh, British Championships. You can see he's just about to possibly lose the lead here from Sullivan Mounsey. The number four getting his elbows out, trying to send it up the inside into the Aintree corner, which he succeeds. Does he get the bike stopped? Just about runs it a little bit wide on the exit. That's oh. going to allow Garnes to come through or possibly not. Good drive there from Garnes as they get very close to a bit of contact with one another on the run down in towards the Brooklyn's corner, down the Wellington straight we go. Evan Belford looking to try and get himself involved in the action as well. Julian Correa there on the number 40 on the Microlist Cresswell Racing Machines made a good start from eighth place. He's up fighting inside the top five as well. But Mounty there, pretty close to contact actually in the entry corner. Just going to say that it's a difficult one because if you're inside, you're hanging off the right hand side of the bike and you don't, you're not really aware if there's a, a rider on the outside. So you pick it up to get a nice drive on there. Could easily be a bike to your left. So have to be careful. Yeah, the number 40. Yeah, there on the green, Ollie Walker, he has to be careful there, not too many uh, green concrete infringements, so he'll be suffering a penalty. Yeah, very, very cautious of that. Harley McCabe with the fastest lap last time around on the McCabe racing machine. You can see Mounty there, this is where he was really strong on the brakes here yesterday, that proving to be the case even in the slightly cooler conditions. Gets the bike stopped a little bit better this time. It's just easy when you've got to sort of let the brakes off, isn't it, so you don't lock the front. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Johnny Gunness being patient there, and it's not the end of the world if you're uh, not leading onto the back straight, as long as you're in close contention with the guy in front, you'll get a good slipstream. But yes, Solomon Mousy certainly means business today, and Johnny Garnes, of course, with that massive target on his back, he was a standout rider last year, uh, he's come back to defend his championship, but everyone else wants a piece of the action, and if they can be anywhere close to Johnny Garnes, then they're doing okay. Keep an eye out for Emmanuel Brinton, flying the flag solo here for the Kavara Project's RS racing outfit there in fourth place, we've got a rider, a two rider crash that's here, unfortunately. Ollie Horner is one of these riders, and the number 11, that's Ian you and Jones, the Jones brother racing team. Yep, so, well, being attended to by the race safe medics and marshals, it's at the Aintree corner once again. Ah, oh, two into one doesn't go. Yeah, tangled up coming out of Beckett's head and through Aintree, and I just, just wonder if it was maybe just what I was talking about, one rider hanging off the inside of the bike and uh, another rider on the left not being uh, in his peripheral vision. Well, yellow flags will be out there, as you can see the riders now walking away, thankfully up and uh, seemingly OK for the most part. So the race does continue on despite those uh, yellow flags. Green flags, though, you can see being waved. So that means you are allowed to overtake in towards this left-hander of Brooklyn. Emmanuel Brinton there trying to get his elbows out. He, of course, was the man who started on pole position in race one. Didn't quite have the uh, pace to get the better of Harrison DeSoy. Of course, he was a bit unlucky with that early red flag but he has looked really, really quick over the course of the uh, 2023 season so far. Very much looking forward to seeing what he is going to be able to do here in this race. Diehards choose diehard, and they get it at Advance Auto Parts.
Down the start, finish straight we go in towards the first corner. Johnny Garnett still at the lead. Here comes Sullivan Moundsy and Evan Belford side by side. They go through the Cops corner. Belford looks like he's just got the overspeed and got the momentum to hold on to P2 for now. There is Emmanuel Brinton on the black number 43, ready to try and bring the challenge. Keep an eye out as well for Julian Correa on the Microless Cresswell racing machine. That's the blue, white and yellow bike you can see in your picture at the moment. He is having a nice little ding-dong battle there with Reese Frost, the debutant on the number 24, started on that second row. Uh, did uh, Ryan Frost, I should say, I beg your pardon, and uh, very much looking forward to this battle continuing here at the front as well. Now, the smart thing to do for Belford, Mouncey and Brinton is not to hold each other up when Johnny Garness gets to the front because if he's given a gap, then he'll dig in and pull away. These guys are tripping each other up, costing themselves some time over, over their laps. So, yeah, uh, fortunately, Belford's gone back to the front, Johnny Garness has gone back, but they just have to be really careful if they're going to get someone really fast like Garness at the front not to hold each other up. Well, if you're a young rider that's sort of learning their racecraft as... Uh, you're a debutant here, for example, if uh, you are Ryan Frost, started on the second row, his first season in the British Town Cup. I mean, what sort of a baptism of fire is it coming into a championship <laughs> well, like uh, this? When you're so inexperienced, you've just got to get on it. You've just got to ride fast, try and stay safe, not take too many chances and, and watch the guys in front. And let, get, stay out there, sitting in the gravel, you're learning nothing. Even if you're not where you want to be results-wise, much better to be circulating and learning, get to know your bike, get to know the racetracks. And uh, I like to see riders like that just finish even if it's in the points and then save the heroics for the end of the season when they've got more experience and they understand what's going on but, but getting too aggressive early on can only maybe cost you DNFs and then you're learning nothing as I said when you're sat at the side of the track Well we we're talking about going three wide into Brooklyn's early we just saw that a little bit further down the order Harrison Desoy as you can see with the uh, purple dot next to his name is the quickest man out on track as it stands for now still sitting in ninth place which is where he started this race it hasn't quite got what it takes to make that forward progress at the moment he's definitely involved in that sort of group that's second in your picture at the moment, but there's almost a splinter group away with this top four for now. Yes, uh, they could join back up though if these uh, if these start holding each other up. Just uh, a message there from Race Control. Ollie Horn has been taken to the medical centre, and if we have any updates, we'll let you know. But hopefully, everything is okay. Okay, here I expect the lap record to go. It was only there was like a couple of tenths outside the lap record yesterday as uh, Johnny Garnes pushes Sullivan Mousy a little bit wide heading on the Wellington Strait. I don't know if that. That was deliberate or it was just uh, trying to jostle for positions for the line three of rest into Brooklands. Emmanuel Brinton there on the inside, Sullivan Mousy, a bit of a meat in the sandwich at the moment as he comes through that left hand and they all managed to continue on in the same positions in which they started that corner. I was actually talking to Johnny Garnes' dad yesterday, he showed me a video of a crash that Johnny had in practice, FP1, and there were all four riders from the Vision Track team yeah. rode the bikes off. Yeah, I, I saw that, I did about five laps, I think three of the riders were involved in one instant. Goodness me, yeah, they're not. Uh, yeah, they're not giving Johnny Garnes any respect, but that's what happens, he has got that target, they need to stay in touch though. Manuel Brinton hits the front for the first time in this race. It's it's getting aggressive, isn't it? Really early here too. Yeah, it's getting a little bit fruity here, a little bit tasty. They have to behave themselves. Um, yeah, race control will be watching that, and there's no harsh penalties handed out here at BSB. But the the object they exercise is to keep everyone safe, so they have to look after each other. Well, just a reminder, the long lap penalty loop is on the outside of the Luffield corner, so I wonder whether uh, if riders perhaps are exceeding track limits a bit too much, they might award a long lap penalty depending on the duration left in the race or whether they might award a time penalty post-race. Let's uh, hope that that doesn't happen, but if it, uh, if it does, we'll keep you updated with anything. All the riders at the front seemingly looking OK for track limits, especially Sullivan Mounty, because I have to say, I feared that before the incident, which sadly took him out of contention, I feared a penalty would be coming his way because he was just on the edge a little bit too much on the green stuff yeah. and uh, I wonder whether race control would have been coming down on him well I'm sure his team and his crew have uh, told them of that uh, and suddenly we've got a group of eight within a second so yeah they have all bunched up and that uh, really is anybody's race now Ryan Frost black and orange flag so that's a uh, technical problem then with the motorcycle uh, the race control have obviously had a look at the bike and said oh hang on something must be hanging off it or not looking quite right and said you've got to pull into the pits and get that sorted uh, too bad, maybe some smoke or something, but yeah, it's only for the rider's safety. But yeah, it's still got a group of eight. And that oh, is, it's uh, a loose bearing belly pan, uh, isn't it? Yeah, that's a shame for Ryan because, of course, started on the middle of that second row. He's gone backwards a little bit uh, in this race, and hopefully he's able to see that black and orange flag, but it is going to bring an early end to the rookies' race. Oh, yeah, yellow flag, there is yeah. black and orange flag. You can just see that on the uh, 
he, he, can, he can go in and have that repaired if it's just a Zeus fastener or something that needs clipping together and get back out and needs to get some track time. But yeah, he's uh, he's on for a good result here, so that's a shame. Just as a rider, oh, hang on a minute, we've got a rider on down. That's yeah. Dan Goodman, I believe. Uh, no, Josh O'Brien, in fact, on the uh, Vision Track Racing Machine. And unfortunately, the Irish riders' race goes no further than lap 10. Thankfully up and OK following that one. You can still see the black and orange flag is out and waving for Ryan Frost on board the number 24. Still hasn't seen it. I was just about to ask, when, as a rider, when you're battling in, in groups like this and focusing on your race, do you, are you actually consciously aware of these things? No, I mean, quite possibly not. Yeah, he, w he, he should be able to see it. The, the, uh, the, the signals are uh, in, in positions where it's the right, it's in the rider's vision, so he should be able to see it. I'm sure he won't be aware that he has got a problem because he won't really feel that. And, and it's not a massive problem, but the worry is if that comes flying off and maybe into the face of another rider, um, might not do them any injuries, but if they can't see where they're going, uh, close up there of Ryan Frost, and he's having a slide there, so he needs to just get in, get into the pits, address the problem, and hopefully he can get back out. But yeah, I'm pleased he's uh, he's in the pit lane now. Yeah, thankfully he's seen that black noise flag comes into the pit lane. I was just about to say, there's a massive dive up the inside into the Brooklyn's corner for Harrison to a couple of uh, corners ago, and you can see the frustration there for Ryan Frost. That's such a shame for him because it's going to spoil his race and. Now you're going to see the team just having a little look down and uh, what's happened. This is what happened here to the number 22 of Josh O'Brien. We just saw it there in the background at Cops Corner. Fast place to crash that as well. That's fast. He's, he's OK. Lots of runoff. Uh, it's, it, it's certainly safe. Twisted Tea is a refreshing, hard iced tea made with real brew tea. Keep it twisted. Down the back straight we go, lap 11 out of 22. Sullivan Mounsey trying to go for the inside line here. Emmanuel Brinton covering off. Evan Belford wobble there for Harrison Desoy, who's slowly making progress up the field. He's been sitting in ninth place for the last couple of laps, but now he's managed to latch himself on to the back of that group. He's now really very much in the fight for this uh, podium battle here. And the number 55 has got pace. New lap record goes to him, 101.447. So, uh, yeah, just slightly under the lap record. So, yeah, Harrison Desoy very much on the kiss. Yep, really exciting stuff. Harvey Claridge actually holding the previous lap record from a couple of years ago. Harvey now uh, racing in the British Supersport and uh, GP2 category <laughs> as uh, there's somebody going off into the car park here at Silverstone. Yeah, lots of acres of tarmac here at Silverstone. Super, super safe, and uh, that's why it's a MotoGP circuit. Now, this definitely, this group has bunched away two, four, six, eight, nine riders. Uh, on their own here, but yeah, all in with the chance of the podium. Yeah, Philip Soroviak, the nearest rider to them in 10th uh, place, and he's some, um, uh, what's that, five seconds off the back of this group as they go three abreast into the Brooklyn's corner. Who is going to come out on top? Looks like Sullivan Mounds, he's got the inside line. Johnny Garnett sticks the wheel up the inside of Emmanuel Brinton, who has Harrison Desoy to his left there as well. They all managed to get back into line on the exit of the corner as they try and get the slipstream advantage. This, of course, is where Johnny Garnett's weight advantage is uh, hugely beneficial for him. He's a pint-sized rider, whereas uh, Emmanuel well, Brinton is one of the tallest in the field. He is, but lap times are very similar here. What what Johnny Garnes tends to have is the, the experience and the, the the racecraft. But important thing here is just to stay in the bunch and uh, save any uh, and if you've got anything up your sleeve, maybe save it for the the closing laps. But but lots of time left, lots of laps left to go in this race. Harley McCabe on the white number seven is getting involved in this act as well. Great to see Harley McCabe. Uh, fighting up the sharper end of the field. Hasn't had a particularly um, harmonious start to his 2023 season so far. No points, uh, in fact, no points on the board for him yesterday with a fourth place, but uh, it's had a bit of a difficult run of it out there on that machine. Meanwhile, let's have a look and see what happens in this battle because Johnny Garnes is now at the helm in this one, followed by Emmanuel Brinton. Evan Belford there sitting in third place. Harrison Desoy, though. Really looking very close on board the number 55. So down the start finish straight we go. There is that white number seven of uh, Harley McCabe. Just battling with uh, Harrison Desoy and Sullivan Moundy, who's just dropped back a little bit from this group. Still plenty of laps to go. Eight remaining here in this second RNG British Talent Cup race. Somebody taking the scenic route there on the outside of the circuit. Just to mention, Johnny Garnet is actually racing over in Europe uh, in the European Talent Cup this year as well. So plenty of seat time for him. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's what these kids need. Lots of track time. The more track time, the better. So, yeah, he's got a good setup there, the vision track. 
racing team and of course a route all the way to MotoGP with the, the Moto3 Vision track team with Scott Ogden and Josh Watley. So yeah, lots of uh, great, great format and uh, uh, great opportunities for the young riders. Great race also for Clayton Edmonds on board the number 64, made 10 places from his uh, P20 starting position and uh, it's having a good run of things out there so far. Got a couple of top 10 finishes last year in this Honda British Talent Cup. Let's see whether he's going to make some forward progress for 2023 as well. I think Harrison Desai could again be the man here. He's just chipping away, he's staying out of trouble, he's setting consistent fast laps and he's very much in touch with the podium bunch. I'll tell you what he looks like on the bike, he looks calm, he doesn't yeah. look like he's rushing it wow. and he's wow. just sort of sat there keeping a brief on what's happening in front, not doing anything too rash and not, blimey, I was just going to say that Holly McCabe comes through like a <laughs> like a scolded cat into the lead of the race as we go through maggots. Yeah, yeah, he is, yeah, and he's got that kind of personality off the bike as well, he's got a sunny personality, he, he understands things, he appreciates the things in life and yeah, I think he's a good little package. So down the back straight we go, Harley McCabe now out in front, but a debris being just kicked up there. I hope that wasn't off of a rider's bike, it might have just been a bit of discarded tyre rubber because of course there's been a fair bit of track action here this weekend, lots yeah, of classes of racing. Got a new leader, got a new leader Tom. Yeah we have, yep, Harley McCabe then in front in this one with Emmanuel Brinton very close behind, Sullivan Mounsey there keeping a close eye on proceedings in third position. Johnny Lines just relegated temporarily back into fourth place. You can guarantee that this won't be the finishing order when the chequered flag flies. Here comes Sullivan Mousy trying to jink to the inside of Emmanuel Brinton. Johnny Garnes fancies a piece of the action, does the supermarket special, the two for one, buy one, you get one free yeah. into Cops Corner. Harley McCabe, remember a couple of years ago he made his debut at Knock Hill. Michael Laverty was, uh, I guess, the guy that found him, knew he had a bit of potential. He'd never ridden an NSF 250 machine again until uh, he got to Knock Hill. He uh, was making great progress in the Saturday race, unfortunately jumped off and uh, had a little knock in the head, so he, he didn't race in the Sunday due to some concussion. But yeah, he's certainly he's, his debut was very, very impressive as well. And like I say, an average season last year, but plenty of potential there for the number seven. Another rider who wants to have a better 2023 is Evan Belford. Of course, he was out with a broken leg for a fair chunk of last season and had a bit of a difficult time of it. Doing good things out there on the RS Racing City lifting machine. And let's see whether he is going to be able to bring the fight to the front here. Across the timeline we go, ready to start the 17th lap out of 22. Three abreast down in towards the first corner. Evan Belford on the inside takes over at the front from Harley McCabe. Johnny Garnes just sitting there in third place as well. Somebody going out a little bit wide there as well. That was Sullivan Mounsey. Not the first time either, so Sullivan just kind of keep things clean. Behave yourself, just you, you've got the pace. Um, yeah, Evan Belford you mentioned earlier, he made his comeback at Knock Hill last year from his broken leg and won. So, uh, yeah, he's uh, another one with potential. I mean, it doesn't seem to be any advantage for Johnny Garness this year. You could argue last year he was little, he was tiny, you get to the front and he'd take off because of his size and weight, but um, it's much more level playing field this year and it seems like there's more guys that can take it to him. So uh, I'm sure he'd love to, especially at this stage of the race, just get to the front and check out, but it doesn't seem to be happening. Maybe he has got something up his sleeve, but it's always a risky strategy, keeping yourself in the bunch if you feel like you've got the potential to go. Lucas Brown having a good ride so far on board the number 29. He's on the black machine, uh, sixth place so far in this race, which is where, incidentally, he finished yesterday in race one. Started 11th here for race two. And as you can see, he's very much involved in this action as Emmanuel Brinton takes over the lead. <laughs> and uh, this is a great British Talent Cup this year. It's much closer. I'm enjoying this immensely. A lot of riders have stepped up to play everyone a lot more competitive at the front. Lap records are going, so they're certainly going faster. It's not like uh, the pace is slower and everybody's bunched up. But this part of the race, in, in any junior championship or even in Motor 3 World Championship, with a few laps to go, that's when it starts to get a bit frenetic. And uh, we're going to see riders just making sure they're at the front. And uh, yeah, it's going to get nice and interesting in the next couple of laps. It just goes to show you fortunes can change so quickly in this class, because Holly McCabe last lap was leading. He's now down into seventh place. Yeah. Johnny Gunness fourth. Yeah, absolutely. Well. Let's see what Sullivan Mounsey can do at the helm of this one. Can he try and bridge a gap or is he going to come under attack? I imagine probably the latter given how it goes. So we're coming in towards the business end of this race now then, Neil. 
if you're these riders, what are you thinking about? Are you thinking about dress rehearsals for overtakes, or how do you play this? Well, you may you may already know that you're strong in the brakes, or you know you can outbreak someone. There's a lot of riders over the years that they know where they have strong points, but the important thing is to stay in the top three or four. If you start getting off the back here, there's a chance that it could people uh, riders getting a bit more aggressive. They could split the group up, and then and you're stuck with in fourth place and a, a second gap to, to third. So important to stay at the sharp end. Um, and just use any skills you've got. Maybe not so important to be leading onto the back straight on the last lap because the chances are you're going to get slipstream, someone's going to get a drive on you. So um, anywhere in the top three, but close to the leader is a good place to be. Johnny Garness was the master last year. He's, he slips to the front, so it will be interesting just to see if he has got anything left in the tank. He certainly looked very safe. He's not had any moments. He's been keeping his powder dry, but everyone has been staying in touch. Really nice block pass from Johnny Garnes going into Brooklands there as well. Just shuffled out Evan Belford wide enough so that he wasn't able to launch an immediate attack into the next corner. And we've got two riders gone down here, unfortunately, thankfully, both up seemingly and OK. It looks like it's uh, Clayton Edmonds and uh, Davidson who have gone down. So Alfie Davidson and Clayton Edmonds on lap 20. Let's wait and see what happens here. Yellow flags will certainly be flying at the point of the incident as um, uh, Suruak, I uh, apologise. So, yeah, Soroviak who's uh, involved in that action. So that's uh, Philip Soroviak and uh, Alfie Davidson who are involved in that one. My apologies to, uh, to Clayton Edmonds. Meanwhile, down the back straight we go. As the race continues here with Evan Belford now in front into the Brooklands corner. Harrison Desoy now up into third place, slowly making that progress. He's almost anonymous, really, in sort of the mid-pack. There are the wave yellow flags. There's where the incident is at the Luffield corner, so no overtaking for the riders into there. But he seems, as I say, a little bit anonymous. And I don't mean that to his detriment at all, because he's just keeping his powder dry at the right points. Let's see what happens here, Neil. Yeah, he's... Uh... So this is yeah, the yellow, yellow bike you're looking at, yeah, just tucked to front, I don't know, maybe still on the brakes, he turned into to Brooklands. Yeah, Alfie Davidson, down he went, unfortunate, taking another rider with him. It's, uh, yeah, it's a fine line for these guys. Yeah, it's a big shame there for yeah, Philip yeah. Soroviak, the Pete Polish Banks rider. Machine, the number eight. Um, yeah, this is uh, certainly going to get, get interesting. Interesting now. <laughs> Penultimate lap. So down the back straight we go. You can see Emmanuel Brinton then putting the pressure on Evan Belford. So dress rehearsal for one last dance then here at the Silverstone National Circuit. Johnny Garnes jinks to the inside, runs it a little bit wide. Harrison Desoy says thanks very much and comes back through. But has Garnes got the inside line into Luffield? Well, he tries to, but Harrison Desoy's got him covered. Now in the third <laughs> place. Sullivan mounts it round the outside. Oh, big and wobble yeah, on the rear. He's not scared of committing. And uh, yeah, he don't want to finish fourth today off the fifth today off the podium. But yeah. Desai just kind of ghosts his way through, like you say, he's kind of very innocuous and just makes his way through and yeah, into podium position. But now, now is when it's going to kick off. Now we're going to see if anyone has really got anything up the sleeve. Final lap then here at Silverstone National for the second race of the RNG British Talent Cup. It's Emmanuel Brinson who leads, but not for long, because here comes Evan Belford and possibly Sullivan Mounty. He's a demon on the brakes, is Mounty, but he's not got the room to try and mount a challenge. Harrison Desoy, meanwhile, on the inside of Johnny Garness for fourth place as they come through out of Aintree onto the back straight for the final time. It's Evan Belford in front then. He's got a little bit of daylight between himself and uh, Emmanuel Brinton there, but can he hold on to it until the check of flag? That's a crucial point. Late on the brakes goes Brinton to the inside for the race lead. Can he hold the line there? He can and he hits the front in this race. Johnny Garnes ready to try and pick the pocket of Belford into the right hander at Luffield as well but not quite close enough. Harrison to Soy meanwhile on the inside with Sullivan Mounty on the outside for fourth place but an amazing couple of corners there by Emmanuel Brinton to come around Woodcote Corner. It's going to be a run to the line here in the Honda British Talent Cup and who is going to get the win? It's Evan Belford by 29 thousandths of a second over Emmanuel Brinton. Johnny Garnett comes home just two hundredths of a second back in third place. What a finish here for race two of the RNG British Talent Cup, and it's Evan Belford back on top. The remaining riders coming across the timing line. Then, what a fantastic finish we have had here. Harrison Desoy, well, he really kept his nose clean in that one. Sadly, the podium eludes him here in race two, but what a brilliantly timed last couple of corners there from Evan Belford, right at the front when it mattered.
Johnny Gonaski winning the wheelie competition despite finishing third. And uh, it's good to see he's happy and, and he's celebrating. It's a long old season, but yeah, that was brilliant. And, and as I said, Johnny Gonaski is a class act in this championship. For anyone to get close to him, never mind finish in front of him, it's great. And it's a fantastic uh, inspiration for the other guys. So, so what a great and clean race as well. Great stuff all the way to the end. 25 points on the board for Evan Belford. Let's have another look at this to the line then. So Evan Belford on the outside. In fact, this is, yeah, fantastically close between these two riders. Just brilliant. Absolutely wonderful racing here in the RNG British Talent Cup. Evan Belford on top once again in uh, 2023, the first victory of his season. And he'll be hoping for similar results as the British Talent Cup continues. You can see the elation on his face. He is absolutely delighted with that result, and rightly so as well. He's always been a strong rider. The next time these riders are going to be out is at uh, Donington Park between the 19th and the 21st of May. Of course, they are going to be supporting the MotoGP event here at Silverstone later on this year in August as well. Let's have a look then, shall we, at the final results from the RNG British Talent Cup. Evan Belford takes his first win of the 2023 season in race two here, ahead of Emmanuel Brinton and Johnny Garnes. Harrison Desoy just off of the podium ahead of Sullivan Mounsey. Holly McKay with a great ride to sixth place. Lucas Brown, Julian Correa also involved in the action, as well as Ollie Walker. Clayton Edmonds inside the top ten with Peter Willis and Harrison McKay on the Wilson Racing Machine just outside. Then it's Josh Bannister, Charlie Huntingford and Ben Jaliffe on the Wilson Racing number 42 with the final points paying position. And here are how the standings look after the second race here this weekend. Two races down and it's Emmanuel Brinton on top by two points over Harrison Desoy. So he was never on the top step this weekend was Brinton, but two second place finishes means that he has got the championship lead heading into Donington Park. Belford there just at four points adrift. Johnny Garnes eight points away, so he'll be hoping for a top step to the podium when we are next out and racing. Let's see how that is all going to play out.